This month we have been testing quite a few X570 motherboards. We've taken a look at the ASRock Taichi, we've looked at the Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, and here on the desk we've got a Zeus's X570-E ROG Strix. This promises to have a similar VRM to their highest end motherboards on the X570 lineup. And with that said, I've also taken some feedback into account from you guys. So we're gonna be running some platform chipset hub temperature tests, as well as looking at the voltage stability tests on the CPU with the 3900X. But with that aside, let's go through all the hoops and whistles on this 329 USD motherboard and see if it really is worth the money in this premium lineup of X570 motherboards. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with the VRM details on this X570 E motherboard. And what we've got here is a 12 plus four power stage design. Azus did make a note to tell me that these aren't typical phases in that they're teamed up versus the typical parallel design. They claim that this supplies cleaner voltage to the CPU and doing a voltage stability test, I'm gonna label this one the TYVST or the Tech Yes Voltage Stability Test. We can see here with the 3900X overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz on all cores, we had after a long stress test in IDA64, something that was indeed very stable. Though getting on with the VRM details themselves, for the V-Core MOSFETs, these are direct MOSFETs. So AKA Dr. Moss IR3555 60 amp MOSFETs. And for the SOC, we've got the IR3553s and these are rated at 40 amps. For the chokes, they're using micro fine 45 amp in-house choke designs from ASUS. And then the PWM controller is the ASP1405L. And so this allows for the V-Core MOSFETs and the SOC MOSFETs to be doubled. And lastly, we've got the caps, which are Nichicon FP black metallic caps rated at 10K. So the VRM on this motherboard is quite simply, put it this way, quality. It's over-engineered for the 3900X. It'll do a good job of handling the 3950X 16 core overclocked as well. And when we look at the temperatures, we got here 61 degrees max with the IR camera on the PCB itself, and that extended over to 57 degrees on the heatsink, which weighs in at roughly 200 grams. And if you wanna keep things even cooler, which you absolutely don't need to in this case, you could put over an active fan over that, and it will do a good job of dissipating heat. Now, continuing on with the heat, we've got the platform chipset hub, which also supports PCIe Gen 4. And in this test, I decided to load up the graphics card and also the bottom slot NVMe solution with the Aorus PCIe Gen 4 SSD. The speeds were absolutely fine on this board and continually spamming fast 10 gigabyte burst tests. We can see here, we've got a maximum temperature of 58 degrees in software and then 57 degrees on the heatsink. So the heatsink is doing its job and comparing that to no heatsink on the PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD, you won't want to do that because it will quite simply throttle as I've tested out in the past. Though as for the platform chipset hub itself, the temperatures, the maximum I saw whilst doing a dual stress test here was 71 degrees in the software. And the fan that they've used is a high quality Delta 40 mil solution. And on top of that, I could not hear it at all compared to the GPU and also the CPU fans while stress testing. I'll let you guys have a little listen. Like I can't even get close, like there's noise. I mean, yeah, this is crappy heaven noise. That's to give you an idea of that. This board also features dual NICs, one of those being a 2.5G solution. Running data transfer tests on this show, the speeds were consistent. They were living up to the branding. And also this got Wi-Fi 6 and testing those speeds also held up to the equation. And speaking of that, you do get an included antenna with this motherboard and Wi-Fi, of course, with the rear IO shield also being integrated into the motherboard. And speaking of the back of the board, you get HDMI display out, BIOS flashback button, as well as an LED to let you know that it's flashing back, eight USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, the anti-surge 2.5G LAN, and anti-surge on the other NIC as well. You get a two by two Wi-Fi module, and it's got integrated Bluetooth as well, and an optical out, as well as five gold-plated audio jacks. Though speaking of onboard audio, I usually do these tests a little bit earlier in the review, but of course we've got some new tests this time around, so we're saving it a little bit later, but let us know in the comments, are you enjoying this review so far? But with that aside, we've got the Supreme FX 
from ASUS for their onboard audio solution. This features the Realtek 1220 DAC solution, testing this out with the crosstalk levels. They were phenomenal, going down to minus 91 dB and the channel balance was pretty much near perfect. And then for the frequency response curve, we got a little bit of a different one here, a slight bit of coloring from ASUS. So we've got 10 to a 100 Hertz, a plus one dB boost, and then zero to six Hertz, we got minus nine dB. And of course this helps lift from six to 10 Hertz pretty much no bass roll off whatsoever. And then after that, of course, after 100 Hertz, we're looking at a perfectly flat line. So it's a phenomenal onboard audio solution, but I guess it's geared towards people who want just a slight bit more warmth to their audio, which I honestly don't mind because the numbers of course check out. Moving on to the mic import, this was solid at a volume level of plus 20 dB 80. If you took it up to 100 plus 30 dB, there was a little bit of noise there, but this will be a natural signal, no noise suppression included, which I honestly personally prefer because then you can use it for streaming and other applications and get a clean signal. So overall, the onboard audio checks out with flying colors. And continuing on with the nitty gritties on this board, you've got addressable five volt out as well as 12 volt RGB connectors. This can all be controlled by the Aura Sync software, which you install on your desktop. If it was something that Zeus could improve on, I'd like to see a BIOS implementation too, so you don't have to install any software whatsoever. Though also included on this board is eight SATA ports, a Type-C out, as well as your Type 3.2 gen 1 usb front outs you've got five pcie slots two of those being 1x the top one being 16x the middle one being 8x and the bottom one being 4x gold if you got the joke let me know moving through the azus bios they are a champion of giving you both simplicity but all the options you would want everything is clearly detailed overclocking a 3900x on this bios was just so easy and smooth. You've got your current capability options staring you right there if you really wanna jack things up. You've also got easy to save profiles, fan tuning utilities, and if you want the motherboard to tune your fan profiles yourself, it can do so too. You've also got some extra options in there to tune the PBO boost settings if you wish for a Zeus to extract a little bit less or a little bit more out of your CPU. And lastly, before we move on to a conclusion, I will say the eight layer PCB on this board is very thick very solid and combine that with the VRM and also the ease of overclocking in the BIOS, I managed to squeeze an extra 25 megahertz out of my 3900X. Keep in mind the other two boards here maxed out at 4.3 gigahertz. So I guess that's something to say that it is just that little bit more that you'll be able to get out of this motherboard compared to the Tai Chi and also the Pro Wi-Fi. And with all that out of the way, this now leaves us at conclusion time with the ROG Strix X570-E. Also one thing I forgot to mention, it does support two-way SLI and up to three-way Crossfire. Though I recently did a video on Crossfire, not really that good in my opinion, something you wouldn't really wanna worry about at this point in time. As for SLI, I'll be testing that out when I get the chance, though, here it is, 329 US dollars. And in Australia, it's actually coming in a lot better comparatively priced to the Aorus and Taichi motherboards. It's coming in at 469 Aussie, whereas the Taichi was cheaper in the US, more expensive in Oz, and then the Pro Wi-Fi was coming in at the same Aussie price. So that is good to see that at least if you're an Aussie, you can get better value, I guess, compared to the other two boards that I've reviewed here. So I would like to see ASRock and also Aorus drop their prices in Australia a little bit. But regardless of all that, you want a recommendation, you want to know if this board is the one to get. And honestly, look at the price tag. Do you need PCIe Gen 4? Do you need an over-engineered VRM? Or if you want to go with a 3950X, then this board is going to cater for you. Keep in mind, it's 329 US dollars. So it is very expensive, but if I was in the market for a high-end motherboard like this, it checks every single box. Onboard audio is phenomenal, VRM is phenomenal all the NICs and all the consistency of the speeds on the USB ports to everything else checks out. The platform chipset hub's good. The BIOS is intricate. You've got all the options you want to overclock as well as not confusing the living shit out of you. You've got expandability, you've got RGB bling, you've got Wi-Fi 6, but as I said before, the only two little critiquing points I have for ASUS is implement an RGB control in the BIOS itself without having to install any software. And also I'd like to see even just a little power button on the board for guys like me 
who like to use these on the test bench. Or of course, if you're diagnosing problems, it's always good to not have anything hooked up but the motherboard and having that power button there can be a good thing, especially on a 329 USD motherboard. But with that aside, great board, high price tag. Do you need the features? If you do, then this board is going to satisfy your needs. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, if you have any questions or comments, let us know in the comments section below, but also let us know what you think of the X570 motherboard so far, and also the Strix E, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.